Fontenelle. I'm a curator at the Cary Graphic Arts Collection at RIT Libraries. The Cary is RIT's rare book library. We specialize in materials that focus on the history and practice of the graphic arts. This is a wide field of study that includes the history of printing, graphic design, typography, calligraphy, and anything related to the book arts like papermaking, bookbinding, and artist books. We have thousands of books on these topics and hundreds of primary source archives. These are original artworks, sketches, and correspondence from practitioners in these fields. In addition to these paper-based collections, the Cary maintains a technology collection of letterpress printing equipment. We hold 30 working vintage printing presses and thousands of fonts of metal and wood printing type. I like to say we preserve this material through use as any faculty member can request a printing experience in a class. We also hold workshops and printing demonstrations throughout the year. And we print our own limited editions cards, posters, and books on these presses. Today I want to introduce the letterpress printing process. Basic knowledge of letterpress is important to students of communication, graphic design, history, literature, computer science, and well, let's face it, everyone. Printing in this manner was one of the main methods used in the dissemination of ideas since 1455, when Johann Gutenberg in Germany devised the leading manufacturing method for letterpress type. Letterpress printing was in use commercially through the mid 20th century. That's over 500 years of influence and it is still used today in sectors of the printing economy. Let's get to basics. Letterpress is a form of relief printing. You may be familiar with this if you printed something with a rubber stamp. An image area is raised in relief on the surface, ink is applied to it, and then the image is pressed into paper to make a mark. That is the simplest form of relief printing. Letterpress takes this simple process a step further and makes it possible to print faster and more consistently than hand stamping. It does this by controlling variables in the printing surface, how the ink is applied, and how the paper is handled. For instance, the metal type traditionally used in letterpress printing was repeatedly cast from one mold for each letter, so the letters are the same size and appearance. You would need thousands of different metal letters from the alphabet to typeset a whole book. Inking of the type was done with cylindrical rollers that apply a thin, even film of ink on the relief type. Paper comes into contact with the inked printing surface only after it is placed in a jig or a guide. This ensures that prints have consistent margins. I am showing an example of iron hand press printing, which was popularized in the 19th century. Typesetting, inking, and paper handling on this press all had to be initiated by a person, which would seem slow by today's mechanized standards. However, skilled printers at that time could get over 100 impressions per hour out of a press such as this. Letterpress printing presses in the early 20th century with the introduction of electricity and cylindrical paper feeding went so much faster than hand-fed presses. Let's look at the type in the bed of the press. This layout is comprised of the individual characters that were set into alignment by hand. The type is backwards. This is because we need wrong reading characters in order to print a right reading mirror image on paper. The type that will print is raised to a certain height and everything that will not print is lower. The type height in America is standardized at 0.918 inches from the foot or base to the type face that prints. Not only do we have metal type in this layout, there is also an underlying support system of spacing material that ensures the type stays in place and does not move around when printing. Spacing material can be super small, like the spaces between the words, and it can be thin, like leading or the horizontal spaces between paragraph lines. 
The larger sized furniture spacing is used to fill in larger non-printable gaps. The type and spacing material get locked up under pressure in a metal frame called a chase, so it can be taken on and off the press without falling to pieces. After a print run is done with this type, the whole layout gets disassembled. The type is distributed into specialized type cases with compartments for each letter. Then the type can be set again into different words, sentences, and paragraphs. With care, this kind of type can be printed thousands of times without wearing out. I've talked about metal type for this explanation, but by no means that is all that can be printed on a letterpress printing press. Type made of wood was used for large format poster printing that was popular in the 19th century. This is much lighter to manipulate in large sizes than metal type would have been. Illustrative material carved out of wood, like woodcuts and wood engravings, were also standards in the field. In the 19th century, photo engravings made out of metal joined the print production workflow. These printing materials made from analog manufacturing techniques make up the bulk of Carey's technology collection. However, digitally designed printing type and plates are exciting developments in letterpress. All of these relief printing surfaces are created using software and digital manufacturing technologies. Some examples of letterpress printing matrices that are first designed with software, like Adobe Illustrator, are plastic photopolymer plates, photo etched magnesium plates, and laser engraved wood type. 3D printing technologies can also generate relief surfaces suitable for letterpress. The future of analog and digital intersections in letterpress printmaking is so promising and changing all the time. Letterpress printing has been the longest running commercial printing process, but it is just one star in the constellation of printing methods that are in use for all kinds of products today. Now that you know a bit about letterpress, next time you press the print button on a photocopier, consider the work that might have gone into hand setting your prints type instead. Let's keep an eye on these fascinating printing developments together. Reach out with your comments and questions, or schedule an appointment to see the presses in action at the Carry Collection. <music>